is that we can also have a personality problem between the two people. They don't like each other. Right? That could be the problem. That could be why we don't have an agreement. They don't like each other. They don't trust each other and they don't like each other. So they don't want, or if they talk to each other, they're going to get angry. They're going to say something bad, it's going to start to escalate. So we want to remove that problem. So we can remove that problem by only talking to the mediator, not talking to each other. Okay? Then, the, then the mediator can talk in a calm way and get all the information in a good way. So let's listen. Dangerous in talking on the phone, says Attorney Lowell Stein. He writes a blog about DWT. People are distracted, they're looking at everything but the road in front of them. When the circumstance changes in front of you, well, you don't change yeah. with the circumstance, and all of a sudden you're going to talk to somebody's car in front of your car. Uh, my name is Lowell Steiger. I'm a professional mediator, and I'm here today on a dispute between these two gentlemen, Michael and Javier. It's a dispute, I understand, about property and a dog. Javier's dog, Michael's property. And uh, since Mike brought the action, Mike, we hear from you, gives a brief synopsis. Terrorize my backyard, destroys my garden, chews on my tires, uh, my trash cans everywhere. And um, I've notified You can see he's listening and writing down, right? Do you know how to do active listening? Hey, okay, well, the mediator was just sitting there like this. Right? He's making eye contact, he's nodding his head, he's writing down. So you should be doing those things too if you're mediating. Okay? Active listening. Uh, is important. Mr. Medina on several occasions I announced time that I've never notified him. And uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. Okay. So what kind of dog? It's a Dalmatian. Nice dog. A nice dog, however, is bad attitude. Bad attitude, alright, okay. So he's destroyed some property. He's destroyed more than So he's checking, right? He's getting the information and he's checking. So he said to him, he's destroyed some property. Did you know that people like when you're listening to them, you write down things. Did you know that? <laughs> How do you feel if you're talking, somebody's writing down? Hmm? Probably you destroyed my sense of humor. I come home angry. I scream at my kids because of these, because of the dog. Oh, yeah. You mean so, so during the day, it kind of builds up in you and you're... Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm at work during the day. When I come home and I see trash everywhere in my, in my driveway, it kind of upsets me. So, like an automatic reaction. Oh, so yeah. 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 All right, well, uh, Javier, what do you know about this? I don't really think it, it is my dog because my dog is always in my house with the doors locked. I installed a video just for the simple purpose to uh, prove to you that your dog is terrorizing my backyard. If, I would like to see that video. You have not seen the video? No, I haven't. If you have shown the video? I sent him a copy. Uh, um, well, unfortunately, I didn't send him via certified mail. However, I sent him a cop. I didn't send him a cop. I placed it under his door doormat, you know, just so he could take care of that problem. Okay, so, so, so you're saying you did give him the video, just you never happened to see I never, I never had it in my hands. Okay. And uh, I also brought photographs uh, today, and uh, the media will probably show me the photographs. All right, well, we do have some photographs here. Uh, is this the photograph you said they brought? That's the photograph. So here's the thing. Uh, you see the dog, you see it in the yard, you think it's possible that maybe your dog's been getting out there. For whatever reason, you think your dog might be getting out there and doing this? Possible? He's asking some probing question, right? You think it's possible, maybe? They show some photograph, right? You think it's possible that your dog might be getting out there? Okay? It's generally a, a thing when you're dealing with people, right? You don't say to them, you shouldn't say to somebody like, you did this wrong, right? Or your dog did that wrong. It's always better to ask them, do you think that you did everything correctly? Then let them tell you, oh, maybe I was wrong when I did this, right? Then it's easier to talk and make a decision. Possible, but I'm not, I'm not having faith in that, that he really did go that way. Okay. If he has pictures, maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. Okay. So, here, so we've, got, we've, got, we've got a big problem here. We've got a situation where you're so angry because your property is being destroyed, ruins your night when you get home from work, and you want to see this dog either stop or die. Well, I don't know anybody. I don't care okay. okay. how, but out. And you, on the other hand, are not even 100% sure that your dog is getting out, but maybe you're a little convinced that he is, and uh, he's destroying Mike's property. 
Obviously, you don't want to have your dog put down in any way, and you don't want to have any problems. So we have to come to some sort of resolution here. Something where, we, where you guys... Do you understand resolution? Mm -hmm. So he's, again, after probing questions, he's summing up again what they want. Right? Okay. Now he's trying to come to make a suggestion. Okay. Resolution. Okay, we each have what you want. So maybe we can come to something where you, if Javier promises to build a fence, keep the dog on his side, you pull go, you know, 3500 bucks, or a reimbursement of 3500 bucks, and you build the fence at your own expense. What well, do you think of that? I think, you know, I don't like it. However, we're neighbors, and we're going to continue to live there for years to come. And uh, I, I want to be in good harmony with my neighbors. So I'm willing to waive my costs or my out of pocket expense of $3,500 if you build the fence and you pay for it. How do you feel about that up here? I feel that's good. You think that's good? I would. You think that's good? I think that's good. All right. Well, then it's good. So, I have my secretary. What was the deal? Paying for three, not $3,500. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, uh... Javier wants to build a fence behind houses. Okay, he's going to pay to build a fence. Okay, that's the solution. Okay? He doesn't want his dog put down, mm -hmm. he's killed. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he makes a solution. You build a fence, it costs $3,500. Mm -hmm. Or so on, right? It's expensive. But it will keep out the dog. Okay? Mm -hmm. Makes a, a solution. Do you think this guy did well in the mediation? Mm -hmm. It's an example, right? So we can see also at the mediation this guy brought photographs that helped. In the real life, my friend brought his phone with a text message from the supplier which said the price. Okay, so the supplier said a different price and then my friend showed the text message to the mediator. Okay? So sometimes these kind of things can help. Right? You can bring some evidence to the mediation that they didn't want to listen to before. Okay? So this is better than going to court. Okay? This is mediation. Arbitration would be whatever this guy decides. Arbitration would be a little bit more serious. Right? We would have more information. We already tried mediation. Right? A little bit more like a hearing in court. But what this guy decides, we already agree, we agreed, we're going to accept it in arbitration. Okay? So this is, these days, it's getting more popular and it's a better way to solve problems. So we are going to try copying this guy, so you can practice doing a mediation. Were you ever the mediator between two of your friends who were fighting? Yes? Then you can be the mediator. Seems like you have experience in, your, in the group, right? So we have 3, 7, 10, uh, 14 students, so that's, uh, let's see, 4 groups, right, 4 groups, so 2 groups of 4 and uh, 2 groups of 3, okay, so we'll have one mediator in the middle, you have two people on one side and one person on one side or one person on one person, okay? So we, we should set up a desk like this with A, mediator, and B. So who wants to be a mediator? You said you were good at mediating, so you could, we need uh, four mediators, you're one mediator. Who else wants to be a mediator? Wants to practice mediating? Volunteers? We need three more, just volunteer to be a mediator. You're going to be a mediator, that's two. Two more. Okay, you're three, one more. Four. Okay. So then you can mediate between these guys. Right, you're, you're A, the seller. You two guys are B, the buyer. So set up the desk so that like that. Okay, the mediator is in the middle. Okay, then you can mediate between these two guys, A and B. Okay? You can mediate between these two guys, A and B. Okay? You can mediate, uh, you guys can be A and B. Can I have you in? This took about uh, four minutes, so we'll take about six or seven minutes. Maybe more if we need it. And at the end, I'll ask you to write on the board. 
what was the result of your mediation? Was it successful or not successful? If it was successful, what was the resolution? Okay. You are the seller. You are selling bicycles. You sold the bicycles in Park B. You think everything was fine. You sent it on time. Everything was fine. Right. The buyer got your bicycle. He finds out that it breaks easily. Maybe the pedal breaks or some other part of the bicycle breaks. He wants a full refund to return all the products. Okay? But this person, no, I already sold you the product. I don't have a return policy. So I'll give you a 10% discount because I want to make a good relationship with you. But not going to refund. Okay? Then the mediator has to try and find a solution. Hey, you already tried to find a solution by yourself. You put it. Or you're going to mediate. So, uh, wait, wait a second. Uh, it's important to set up the body language correctly. So if we're doing a mediation, the mediator can sit here. here. Okay. And so the agent is here, the agent is here. The desk moves, there are no trees. Okay. So if you move the desk, like this setup, can you see this setup? You might just sit here. We'll try to follow the steps. First step is the mediator gets the information and notes down something this is true. And ask some probing questions. Even if you don't write, you can pretend to write. They feel better. Pretending to write. Oh, I can not do it. How do you talk about it? Yes. Everything, all, all requirements was. 
wondering if you can sure, make sure uh, you, you, you just uh, know about the yeah, process, is why but, but the only uh, 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 told you about uh, the local achieve price because of the yeah, I know the quality is not well, but I only know the real. And then you made a contract with the car. So you said you asked for a
Okay, so if you can't read from there, you can come closer. If you can read from there, it's okay. after service on the bad quality ones? Just after service for the good quality parts? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> prepared broken parts and give it 5% for fun? Yeah. So you were prepared to give 10% but you only give it 5% and repairing? And repairing, okay. So we can say we have a, some of them are similar, some of them are a little bit different, right? Maybe in this case the buyer got the best deal, right? So, uh, you can see that we want to just understand what a mediation is, right? And the mediator can practice during the mediation. Okay, we can find a better way to solve the problem through mediation or arbitration. Where can we find an arbitrator if we have a dispute with another company? We want to find an arbitrator. Where are we going to find them? We want to find an expert in the area. And there are some organizations, associations, right? We can check and we can try to find a neutral arbitrator. So next let's talk about intellectual property. So discuss with your partner what is intellectual property? What is intellectual property? What does that mean?
Companies spend millions of dollars for brand names or trademarks to symbolize quality and design the customer. We spend millions on research to develop products, processes, designs and formulas, patents. Okay? Intellectual or industrial properties are along the most valuable assets for a company. If I'm a pharmaceutical company, I spent seven years researching how to make a drug to cure cancer, for example. Then somebody else just gets my design or process. Right? It's a big deal for me. Okay, so <coughs> counterfeiting and piracy are words we could use when something is going wrong. Do you understand piracy? We have pirates like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. There are not many of them these days, right? We're mainly talking about uh, using the intellectual property that we shouldn't be. So we have kind of counterfeit, counterfeit goods. Do you have any counterfeit goods? If you answer on the video, then I can have you arrested. <laughs> Evidence, right? I tried to trap you, but it didn't work. Right, so... Uh, in some countries, we can find counterfeit goods are being sold openly on the streets, right? In other countries, not so openly. But it could be about more than 100 billion annually, this kind of losses, okay? <clears throat> Microsoft actually allowed piracy a little bit, because their idea was, if somebody takes my Microsoft Excel or Word, they get used to using Microsoft Excel or Word. Then later, if the law changes, they're going to buy it. So for example, in China, there's a lot of pirates, or in other countries too, Brazil or so on, a lot of people copy the Microsoft Word in Excel, right, and give to their friend or so on. But Microsoft is not that strict on that because it means that they are becoming a Microsoft user. Then later they can make money from them. Okay? So sometimes companies allow piracy a little bit. Pharmaceuticals is a really big one. Okay? So 2% of this much of drugs sold each year. So, we have to think about how can we protect ourselves? How can we protect our intellectual property? So, we can see cases where companies have lost the right to trademark and had to pay back. McDonald's in Japan, Coach in Korea. Every country has a different law. So some countries, the user, first person to register, could be the trademark holder. In other countries, the user is the trademark holder. So many businesses don't take the proper steps they need to take to protect their IP. So there's two ideas. One is prior use. Whoever can show first use is typically considered the rightful owner. Okay, I was using it first. Then there's registration. The first person to register a trademark is considered the rightful owner. So we can see these kind of things like, do you know the like button on Facebook? Yes? Do you use Facebook? No? There's a button called like button. You press it, it means you like something. Right? Some guy in Sweden said, oh, I invented the like button before Facebook. Right? So there was a court case that, there was a case that he said Facebook copied him. He had the like button and they copied him. But Facebook said, no, we didn't. Even if you'd had the like button before, we didn't know about it. Okay? So we can have that kind of dispute. So a company that believes it can always establish ownership in another country by proving it used the trademark or brand name first is wrong. They could lose their assets. So in Jordan, do you know Jordan is a country in the Middle East, right? They said the first person to register the trademark is the owner. So if you go to Jordan, you can find a McDonald's. But it's not the US McDonald's, it's another McDonald's because they registered the McDonald's trademark. Okay? Or other companies, they registered the Nike or another company trademark. So they can use that trademark in Jordan because of the legal system there. 
So we have some international agreements about international intellectual property. Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property, 100 countries. Inter-American Convention for the American countries. Madrid Agreement for European countries. We said like the EU, right? This is the kind of thing that the EU would make law about. Okay, the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Patent Cooperation Treaty, European Patent Convention. So we can see there's a lot. The trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, TRIPS. So the companies get together and they agree. In TRIPS, right, is an important one. The countries all get together and they decide if a patent is registered in this country, then it can be the same as the patent registered in my country. Okay? That kind of agreement. Uh, so, apart from the US, there are regulations that the holder of the patent should share knowledge with their country. So there are different philosophies about uh, patents and intellectual property. Okay? One of them is that I did the work, so I deserve the benefit. Okay? Do you understand that idea? So, let's say it's a mer merit. I did the work, so I deserve. Why? Right? But another one is like social welfare. Do you understand welfare? These are the main two ones. Or utilitarianism, is another word. Right? So, for society. It's better for society that everybody knows this, gets access to this intellectual property. Okay. So, these are the two main ideas which class against each other. The US is more on this side, right? Asia is more on this side. So, we can see that Asian countries have a different philosophy about intellectual property. They think it should be shared for the public good. Okay? But in the US, they think, what's the problem? Why, why did the US think we need to have this kind of merit, merit system? What would be the problem if we didn't protect the intellectual property? What can you think would be a problem? Do you understand incentive? No. Incentive? Okay. Incentive means People do something because they get a reward. Okay, so if you're working, I'll give you an incentive. You sell 10 new cars by the end of the month, I'll give you an extra $1,000. That's an incentive. Okay? So in this case, the incentive is clear. I do my research and development, I work hard, I get the rewards. Maybe I become a millionaire. Okay? In this case, maybe I say it doesn't matter. I'm not going to try it. Why, why bother? Because even though I make a great invention or do something great, I'm not going to get any advantage. Okay? So we have kind of collectivism culture here, where people might be incentivized by collectivism. They think, well, yes, I will. I will still do all this research and development because I think it's good for society. Right? So, Different way of thinking. Can you understand those two different ways of thinking? One way says, if we don't offer an incentive, people won't do anything. There must be a personal incentive. You must know that you have a chance of being a millionaire. Otherwise, you're not going to spend seven years in your basement, right? Working on something. Some other people say, well, she'll spend seven years on her basement working on something. Because she wants to do good for society or good for the world, right? So maybe she will. And then, in the end, you should share your invention with everybody so the world can get the best advantage. So the clearest debate about this is in India. They have some pharmaceutical companies which make some drugs, let's say to, to cure breast cancer. This is like a real case, right? Five, and uh, this company American company said, or Swiss company, let's say Swiss, don't want to be picking on America all the time, right? So this Swiss company says, uh, uh, we have the patent for this drug, right? Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, 
they have a patent, but your patent runs out after 20 years or so on, right, in India. So after 20 years, anybody can make the drug. So the Swiss company wants to make another drug which is really similar, and to make a new patent which lasts for another 20 years. Okay? And then they say that nobody can copy this new drug. So the Indian court decided that against the Swiss company, they said yes, people can copy this drug. Okay? So you can get this breast cancer drug for very cheap in India, just one dollar instead of ten dollars per pill, for example. So the poor people couldn't afford ten dollars a pill because that's uh, five hundred dollars a week or whatever. Okay? They can't afford to pay that. But if it's just one dollar, they can pay fifty dollars a week. It's okay. They can pay for this. Okay? So we can see these two arguments. In one of them, if the women have the access to the drug very cheaply, then they can save themselves from breast cancer and more women can stay alive, right? But what about the Swiss company? The Swiss company says, I don't make any profit, I don't make enough profit. It took me 10 years and a billion dollars to research to make this drug. Okay? So I should be able to make my money, at least get my money back, right? Or make some profit for, for myself. So can you see the problem here? The different ways of thinking, right? What do you think? Do you agree with the Indian court? You don't know all the details exactly? Or do you agree with the Swiss company? Hmm? It's a hard question. Some people agree with the Indian court. It's the same in Brazil. They have a similar type of debate, okay? Uh, especially where people don't have the income to pay for the drugs. It's more important, okay? Or the country's health system is not going to pay for it. So, we have these two main uh, debates about intellectual property. And we can see that in some, some Asian countries, in, they don't feel as strong in protecting intellectual property. So, for example, the law in China is not as strong as protecting intellectual property as against the law in the US. I was surprised when I went to China, when I was in China, Somebody offered to teach me Chinese for free, just for free. I couldn't believe it, right? It was very nice. Because maybe the society in China was different before, right? Or they had a different thinking. So they thought that I just want to help him, right? It's just better for everybody, I can help him. So when I was doing some research, somebody else just offered to help for free, right? Just to help me to interview people in Chinese or that kind of thing. So I guess that wouldn't happen in Ireland. Right? People don't have that way of thinking. But that can be reflected in the law, too. So the law in China is not as strict as protecting the intellectual property. It's more sharing, right? We should share the intellectual property or so on. So just if we're a company, we need to understand that the law is different in different countries. So we, if we go to one country, we might expect that our intellectual property might not be protected well. So. What would we do? What could be a strategy? If we are going to a country where our intellectual property is not going to be uh, well protected, what could be a strategy we could use? If we are a pharmaceutical country, company selling drugs, we could use licensing, right? We license the product to a local country company. We just sell them the license and then it's not our problem anymore, right? The other company will have to go to court to stop the copies, okay? So, uh, we have to use the patent within about three years. To get a patent is not easy. We have to apply for the patent. It has to be checked. Nothing already exists like that. It's really new and original idea. Yes, check, check. It's going to take more than a year to get international patents, right? So, the US idea, encourage and protect innovation. Encourage and protect innovation, right? They want to encourage people to innovate. Give them the incentive. You could make it rich. You could be a millionaire. Work hard for seven years in your basement, right? Korean idea, more on this side. One person has an idea, should benefit everybody. So protecting your IP, you need to register your IP with the relevant agency. If you have a problem, first try mediation and arbitration. Complain to the government. 
there are ways we can complain to the government. Okay, they have government usually has a special way you can make a complaint. Complain to the World Trade Organization. So many countries are members of the World Trade Organization. So if they're doing something very wrong, the government is doing something very wrong, they can get some tariff or that kind of punishment, right? Uh, Microsoft, we said, they can see piracy as a free trial. Sometimes companies don't mind. So it might be a big problem for your company. You might see it as a free trial, okay? Warner Brothers, they change to what the market will bear. So in China, Warner Brothers sell their DVD for $5. In the US, $15, right? Because they understand the intellectual property system is not as strong in China, okay? So they understand their product is not going to be well protected. So they change the price, okay? And then they make something, so if I buy that DVD in China, it doesn't work in the DVD player in, in the US, okay? So that kind of way. This drug company could do this too in India. They could reduce the price just for India. A little bit harder with drugs because maybe somebody will buy them in India and try to sell them in another country, right? But we could try that anyway. So then we have specific laws related to marketing. So all countries have laws related to marketing. <coughs> Cigarette advertising is probably one of the most famous ones. Different countries have different laws for cigarette advertising, right? So anyway, I just noticed the time is finished, right? So then let's finish there for today. So another student told me they have to China for their final report. So just by next week, it's just better to get organized earlier. So by next week, uh, you tell me your group and your country. Okay, and you can also, you don't have to decide the product by next week. Might be better to do, right? But just tell me your group and your country by next week. Already we have three countries down. Okay. <laughs>